Hello everyone. Um, how are you doing? Are you, are you sleepy? <laughs> I am sleepy. Okay. I'm sorry for um, ruining your coffee break. Uh, so apologize for that. Um, so I'm going to be giving a very technical talk. Um, so I hope you, you enjoy it. I don't know if it's going to be boring or not. Um, I'm going to be talking in English. I will try to be as clear as possible. Uh, please interrupt me and let me know if, I, if I'm talking too fast or whatever, okay? So, we are going to be talking about flash, flash memory. It's going to be an introduction to flash memory in, in Linux, of course. Uh, so, my name is Ezequiel Garcia. Uh, I work for Collabora with Gustavo and Helen. I don't know if you know them. Um, I think that's it for the presentation. Oh, I am a Linux kernel developer in Collabora. Okay. So, um, I don't have a, yeah, but, yes, because it has to point somewhere. Okay, no worry, don't worry. Just one second. Okay, Linux is like the rock, like the bomb. Okay. Um, okay, so let's uh, begin with the with the agenda for today. I, um, it's going to be mostly about flash flash memory and about how well or not well it this is supported in Linux uh, kernel and Linux in general. Uh, it's going to be focused in embedded devices, uh, so for those interested in um, em embedded systems, it's going to be relevant, I guess. Uh, we're going to be first talking about, talking about uh, the flash memory itself, the flash um, about the NAND, the NOR, and about the, the hardware, uh, just to make like an introduction into the subject, um, so we can later understand um, the constraints and all the, the design choices and all the complexity the kernel will have to solve to, to give us a file system on top of flash memory. Okay, and then we're going to be talking about MTD, which is the first level, the first layer, the lower, the lower one, and then we're going to be talking about UBI and UBIFS, uh, which goes on top of MTD. Um, the talk is going to be simplifying a lot because it's a very, very broad topic. Uh, it's very, very complex. And so I'm going to be going, uh, skipping many, many details. So let's start with the hardware side. Um, I'm not a hardware developer, so I don't know much about this. I'm going to be just presenting you the, um, the, um, the, te the technology. So first of all, flash flash memory. Uh, would you? I don't know what do you think when I say flash memory. Uh, I I'm sure you don't think in Fujio Masuka, which is the the guy that invented this in 1980. Um, I thought it was it was nice to to mention him because he's like the guy like re realized that we could store bits in NAND and NOR cells and that we could manufacture that. Uh, basically, that's what give us pen drives and uh, SD cards and solid state drives and all that stuff is based in NAND memory, NAND memory, because they are NAND, NAND like cells. Okay, I'm not going to be talking about that. Um, so this is this is a kind of flash memory that has a lot of hardware to um, to give a lot of capabilities and make it look like a rotational disk. You know, the old drives, the old uh, hard drives, those are uh, rotational disks, spinning disks, uh, and you can simply read and write that. Okay, flash, flash memory, you can't do that. It's not as easy as, okay, read and write. We're going to be talking about that. So this is called managed, managed flash memory because there is hardware to, to solve a lot of complexity. Uh, we are going to be talking about raw NAND, raw, raw flash, I'm sorry, raw flash. Raw, uh, which is the, 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 bare, the bare memory, right? It's, it's the, the memory chip. 
with all the, with all the bits. Uh, it's going to be focused on that. So in order to support that, uh, Linux will have to provide all the support for the complexity. So we're going to be seeing that. Uh, it's, it's, not, it's not for the pen drives. It's for those chips that are in embedded devices. Um, the first question you might be asking is um, why would I use a raw NAND device or a raw NOR device uh, if I can just put a, a pen drive? Well, there are many reasons. One of, one of, one of the reasons is for, is for cost. I mean, it's, it's very, very cheap to just put one of these. And managed devices are, are more expensive. Uh, MMC devices are, are more expensive because they have more hardware. And the second reason is that you have all the control on, on, on your side. You, when you are designing your embedded system, you can, you can control exactly what you want to do to the flash. With, with the MMC, you don't know exactly what, um, what the hardware is doing, okay? Because there is so much hardware on top of the, on top of the flash chip, okay? But in this case, it's all going to be software. It's called all going to be open source and it's called going to be on our side with all the bugs and all the fun that that means. So uh, let's let's see how the memory is is uh, is divided. How is the, the geometry for a chip? In this case, it's it's a NAND chip. Uh, we have different kinds. We have NAND and then we have NOR. Uh, NOR is um, a little bit less less complex, so let's let's see the one that is more complex. Uh, so basically, you cannot go read a byte anywhere. You cannot just say, "Okay, I want to read some byte in some offset." The memory is divided in pages. The pages can be it's it it varies from from chip to chip, but it could be, for instance, uh, two thousand Ks the size of the page, it could be 4Ks, something like that. 2Ks, not 2000Ks. 2Ks, 4Ks, 8Ks, etc. That is the size of the page. The page means the minimum, minimum size for, that, for data. So you can, you can read in pages and you can write in pages. You cannot go read one byte, okay? So that imposes already interesting cache requirements and all that. And then you cannot simply write memory because you have to you have to wipe it first. So the pages are all grouped together in sectors, and you have to first, like it says there, you have to first uh, uh, clear the sector, erase the sector, and and then you can start writing it. So what what does that mean? Let's 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 think about that. Um, let's say we, will, we, we want to change something inside the memory, right? Well, we will have to read the entire erase sector, read the entire sector, which is in that case it's 64 pages, which means uh, 128 case. We are reading 128 case in the kernel, so we have to have a buffer of 128 case in the kernel. You know, for, D, for DMA reasons, that's very expensive to have a contiguous 128K buffer. We're going to read the, uh, the sector. We're going to change what we want. Then we do the, um, the clear, we, we wipe it in the flash, and then we have to write the changed contents. Okay, so it's like much more cumbersome than, cumbersome than a simple disk. Um, okay, so that's, those are the main constraints we're going to deal with. Oh, and let's let's talk about let's 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 mention the other constraint right right now. Uh, sectors cannot be erased uh, as as many times as as we want. We will have a count, and then after that counter, the sector will die. Simply as that, so it will go go wasted. You know when 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 people say oh, uh, SS, SS, SSDs have have this this lifetime, I don't know if you have heard about that. Well, it is, it is because the, the sectors after you, you, have, you have wiped them a number of times, uh, they simply go bad 
and you cannot longer use them. Okay. Okay. So that 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 will impose another interesting interesting constraint. We cannot simply go doing a crazy amount of of, of data I/O, simply reading and writing, reading and writing. Um, we will have to try to do that as 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 little as possible. And that's go. That's what the the software is going to do. Okay. Okay. Let's talk of, uh, about the interface. Um, about the interface of RLL NOR and and NAND. Uh, as you can see there, I don't know if you can if you can see that, but uh, NOR NOR chips have an uh, an address bus, very large bus. It's there. It's like uh, 26 lines. And then you have the eight eight lines uh, data bus, so that that means a lot a lot of pin counts, right? Let's let's just for, for, forget about the the control pins. We don't care about those. Uh, the the chip is going to be very very large. It's going to have a lot of pins, okay? And you know for for size for for space reasons, um, that's going to be undesirable. So for that reason, nor is not not so much used this on this on these days. On modern days, and then you, you, we we have NAND, which has a much lower pin count, but now that means the bus is serial because we have just eight eight bits. We have just one byte to send the commands. It's a serial bus. We we can write the command and then we can read back. Uh, so what is that going to mean to us? Well, the memory is no longer. Uh, we we cannot point the CPU and and then ask it to start uh, to start running some code because well the CPU cannot uh, put the the address right because there is no bus for, for putting the address. Okay, then then we have a variant uh, which is very popular, which is S SPI NOR. The S the SPI NOR is is like a NOR chip wrapped around an SPI uh, slave. That means, um, well, the, that, that the pin count is, is much, is, is, is less. There, there are simply less, 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 less pins. So uh, the chip is much, is much s smaller, and that's going to be great for us. So S SPI NORs are very frequent in a lot, lot of embedded devices. For uh, to store small amount of firmware and maybe some some data, some configuration, whatever. Okay. So just that you imagine what we are talking about, I want you to to, to picture this. Uh, the NAND has a serial bus, so let's say that that we forget about those um, those uh, uh, control lines. Those are the the control lines. Let's let's just for, forget about that, and simply focus on the the I/O line. Um, you can see that we have to put a command there, and then we have to put the address, five bytes. They are five cycles, and and then we will have some time, and then the NAND will start sending us the bytes. Let's say that is, for instance, a, a, some some kind of of um, of uh, read. We are, for instance, reading the the NAND chip. Um, so think about this. It's going to be a, a very slow uh, thing to do because we, we we have to wait for the bus to answer and and so that's that's going to be slow to do. Okay, just keep that in mind. Well, relatively slow. I mean. Okay, so the constraints uh, on on NAND devices, there is no byte uh, uh, there is no byte uh, byte size the data that 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 we can send and then and then receive, um, and then the sectors the blocks will go bad after a number of 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 wipe operations of er er erases. Um, so that means that we will have to worry about bad bad blocks. We we'll, we we'll, we'll have to worry about blocks going bad, okay? Uh, but also NAND, NAND devices will have blocks uh, 
will have bad, bad blocks factory shipped. So when, when you go and buy, I don't know, a thousand NAND chips, uh, you may have, NAND, uh, you may have bad, bad, bad blocks, bad, bad sectors. That means sectors that you cannot use, okay? And so that means we will have to, to, to do some kind of, of, of bad block management uh, from the start, from the very beginning of the, of the, um, of the setup. Okay. And then there is one other thing that is too complex to discuss because it's a long, long subject that is uh, random, random bit, bit flips. Uh, bit flips appear when you, when you read the NAND, when you write the NAND, when you wipe the sectors. Uh, bit flips are, are there happening all the time. And you have to somehow fix them. Um, but let's not talk about that. Okay. So, as I have just said, the constraints mean that uh, we cannot run code, we, we, we cannot do uh, some kind of, of ex 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 execute in place. Uh, it's possible to do execute in place. It's possible with some hardware. There are like uh, special chips that will hide all the complexity of the serial bus and we'll pretend to the CPU that it can run code, okay? But uh, typically, that is not directly possible. Um, so, since the sectors will go bad after a number of, of, of wipes operations, uh, we will be doing some wear, wear leveling. Uh, that's one of the most, that's one of the things we're going to be focusing uh, in, in this talk about wear, wear leveling. Uh, what, why do we need world leveling? Well, think about this. You cannot simply go and, and, and use, use one sector because um, if, you, if, you do, if you do the numbers, it's going to, to, um, to make your, your flash go, go bad much, much, much faster than, than if you try to uh, spread the usage uh, and, and like, like use use the, the sectors all at the same time, something like that. So you have to do some kind of uh, rotation, some kind of cycling, and use, use, use the first sector, then use the other sector, and, and so on. That's, that is go, what is going to be maximizing the life. And then, of course, uh, bad block management is going to be needed. It's going to be needed in the kernel, and it's going to be needed in the, in the bootloader, too. Um, I mean, Let's, let's think about this again. Uh, what does it mean to have bad blocks? Well, if you, are, if you are reading the flash, you will be reading page number zero, one, two, da, 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 and then one sector will be dead, will be bad. And so you, you, you simply can't read that, that sector, it fails. When you do the, the read up, it fails. Uh, so somehow, for instance, if, if you are in the, in the bootloader and you are reading the kernel, somehow you, you have to know that you, you have to skip those sectors and, and well, and so on, so on. Um, so that means the bad block management layer has to be in the bootloader and it has to be in the kernel and it has to be the same layer. I mean, it has to have the same in, um, semantics or the same, uh, the same uh, knowledge about what bad block means, okay? Okay. Let me drink some water. So do you have any questions so far? This is just the boring part, I guess. Yes? Yes, shoot. Hey. They will give you a microphone because I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Hi. As you were saying, um, you can't read a byte. So we, if you w let's say you want to, um, to modify only a byte on, on a page. You need to read the, the whole the whole page, modify the byte, wipe the page, and then 
you write the, the new page with the new bytes? Yes. Okay. In fact, it's not the page. You have to read the entire sector. Let's say it's the sector is 128 case. Yeah. You have to read the sector, change one byte, and then write it. So of course, nobody wants to do that. So there will, there will be a lot of software to avoid doing that. There will be a lot of caching, of course, to like, OK, let's store enough changes until we have one sector of changes, and then we can, and then we can write that, OK? Yes, yes, I'm just thinking. Uh, so the question is very good. Now, now, if there's going to be caching, and we're going to be caching sectors, we will have always a buffer of one sector. And then what happens if I unplug the machine? What, what, what happens if I have my, let's say I have my cell phone or some crazy device, my car, whatever. It has a NAND chip, and we have a one sector buffer, and suddenly I take the power out. What, did I just lose all my changes? I don't know, something to think about. Left, left as, an, as an exercise. Well, those are, those are the, prob the problems we will we'll have to solve, okay? Um, okay, I am s a little bit stutter, so sorry about that, and 10 minutes, but I've just started. Okay. Okay, so I don't know if I'm going to be presenting the whole thing in 10 minutes, but I'm going to try. So what is our goal? Uh, well, basically, on the software side, we want to give the user some simple Unix file semantics. Of course, we want to have a file, open it, and read it, and so on. So how are we going to do to, to get there? OK, so there is a large stack that will, that will get us there. There is a large stack. Uh, does it work? OK, there is a large stack that will get us from, from, from the, the, the user space that I have drawn below for, for some reason. Um, and then via, via many, many layers, we will get to the hardware. So all the complexity is going to be solved there, all the complexity to give us the Unix file semantics. OK, so the first one is the MTD Linux subsystem. Uh, it handles NAND, NOR, and SPI NOR. So Basically, um, the goal of the MTD subsystem is not to solve where we are leveling, not to solve bad blocks. So we are thinking, what, what, what does it solve? Well, it's a very simple subsystem, to be honest. It's very small. And all it does is simply uh, provide a simple uh, set of functions, a simple uh, in interface, uh, like, 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 like this. Okay, let's let, let's take a look at the at the the interface. So it's going to give you simple read, write, erase uh, functions, and it it doesn't matter if if below, if no, no, let's not say below. If behind it there is NAND nor it doesn't matter. There's going to be a NAND driver or a nor driver uh, solving it, and it will just work. So like I said. Here, there's going to be NAND and NOR drivers behind the MTD core, and those are the ones that are going to send the commands that I show. I show the commands, so, okay, for, for this NAND chip, we have to craft a special type of read, and for this NOR chip, we have to prepare a different type of chip. And for the SPI, we have to go through the SPI bus. So all of that is going to be simplified by the MTD framework, the MTD sub subsystem. That is the interface that is going to be inside the kernel. And for the user, the interface is a char device. I don't know if you're familiar with that. I hope so. Um, so it's, it's a simple char device with a very simple uh, set of functions. But we, we, we really don't want that, right? I mean, we want to have file, file real, real Unix file stuff. So that is going to take us just as far as OK, a simple way to access the raw chip, but that is the only thing it does. OK. Uh, we, can, we can partition it, but that's just a detail. Let's just forget about that. So like I said, MTD layer doesn't do any 
but block hiding, it doesn't do any world leveling. Uh, however, it gave us a, a simple uh, set of functions, and that's going to be useful to create another layer on top of it. So UBI is the first of those layers. UBI will solve all the problems we had so far. UBI will do bad block. It will do world leveling. And, and that's it. It's, it's, it's like magic. Um, we can now read, write uh, to the flash. OK? And that's like, OK, we are almost there. So let's, let's take a look at the API just to finish on time. Um, so we can, we, can, we can read, and we can write, and we can also do a change. So there, when it says uh, lab, it means uh, logical sectors. So I have talked about the physical sectors. Well, UBI will give us volumes that are composed of logical sectors. So whenever a sector is about to go bad, UBI will say, oh, 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 let me map this, this sector to a different physical sector. So so the user will never know. And so that is, that, is what, uh, that is why we can now do a change function. The change function simply, uh, you can simply give it a, some, some new buffer. And you can say, uh, you can say uh, on, let's say, lab, lab, number, lab, lab number 200, let's put some new data. It doesn't matter. If, it's, if, it's, if, if the physical sector is about to go bad, it doesn't matter if we need to do where, where leveling. If we need to do where leveling, UBI will find a different sector and will map the information there, OK? So if you think about it, uh, it's a very, very complex layer. So whereas the MTD was, was very simple, UBI is very complex. And it has threads to do where leveling and to do garbage collection and da, 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 da. OK. Uh, however, UBI doesn't, UBI doesn't give us file semantics because, as I have shown, they are just functions to write to the flash. OK, we now have like a, like a simpler flash, a flash that does the world leveling and does the blood, bad block management. But it's not a file system yet, OK, which is what we want. So. UBFS, UBIFS, it's a file system that is especially designed to work on top of UBI. And, oh. and more to that, it's, um, it's a file system that, that is especially designed for, um, for devices then that, that you, can, you can take the power of, right? So it's, it's safe in that, in that regard. Uh, many, many devices have si such a kind of... Uh, I need, for instance, you may need to, you need to, I don't know, if you have, have a fridge, let's say you have a fridge with, with Linux. Well, nobody says, oh, there is a power of button here. You can, you have to press it and you, ha you have to wait because we have an AND. Well, no. This is a special file system that lets you just take off the plug, okay? And it has a lot of other features such as scalability, which is very important which means that uh, it doesn't matter whether the flash is, is uh, larger, the mount time for the file system is, is the same. It's very small, and it, it doesn't depend on, the, on, on how large the file system is. Um, and then there is, there is, there is write-back support, which, uh, which is, uh, for, for it is very important for, for, um, for speed reasons. Um, okay, I guess we have to, yeah. So I have prepared some examples. Do you have time for examples? No. Eight minutes? Oh, okay. Let me take a look. Okay. Why are you rushing me? <laughs> okay, I'm going to show some examples if I can. Uh, not easy with the microphone here. Yeah. OK. I'm not going to show them. I'm, uh, I'm going to just show them in the, in, the, in the slides, and you have to believe that they work. So uh, basically, there are, there, are, there, are, there, are, there are ways that, that you can use to, to like, 
like you, you don't need to have uh, some kind of flash type to test this. You can test it with a simple file, okay? So like I showed there, uh, there is this block to MTD module that you can load and you can pass some kind of uh, uh, loopback device. I don't know if you are familiar with loopback devices. It's basically giving you a block device on top of a file. So we, we have a file and then we have a loopback block device and then we have the MTD device. All of that is going to be simulating the, the MTD device, which is going to be useful for, um, use, useful for testing. So as you can see, you, can't, you, you, can, you can play with this. You can play with all these concepts that I have explained. You can take a look at the source code because it's all open source. And you, you, you don't have to have uh, special boards. You don't have to buy stuff. You can use your laptop, your, your, your computer. OK. Uh, so after, after you do the mode probe, you, you call the block to MTD, and you magically have a slash, slash, slash dev, slash M device. And then once we have that, OK, nice. We have an MTD device. It has a sector of 500,000 uh, bytes, um, and it, it, it already detected that it's RAM, because it's all like, like RAM-based, sort of. OK, so once, once we have the MTD device, we can uh, format it. We need to format the MTD device. Uh, after, after we format that, um, we will have the UBI device, okay? Once, once we have the UBI device, uh, you can add some, some volumes. All of that can be done dynamically, which is very nice, uh, which is possible because of this uh, logical way of physical sectors being mapped to logical ones. So you can just say, okay, I want my 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 volume to be bigger, now I want it to be smaller, uh, it's all possible because it's simply mapping and, and, and mapping, it's all logical. So with those three simple lines, you can format the MTD device to look like, 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 uh, like UBI. Why do you need write? Why do you need that? Well, because the logical sectors have some metadata. Uh, so the physical are just the raw sectors, but the logical sectors need some metadata so, so UBI can do all the world leveling and can know where they are mapped and so on. So the format is the uh, command that does that. Um, okay, once, once we have the volume, we can start using it. Uh, for instance, we can, we can do some file system using some some directory, uh, and then and then you can do the write of the file system to the UBI volume, and then you mount it, and that's it. It's quite simple. Uh, we don't have time, but you can test that. Okay, so that's like the first part. Yes, five minutes. I know. Okay, there is a special feature that that is given by, uh, by this, and is that you can do a block device on top of the UBI volumes, okay? So why do, we, why do we want that? Well, you want a block device so you can mount regular block file systems, okay? Um, so it doesn't have all the features of the, of the UBI file system. It doesn't do the power cut, tolerance, and so on, so on. Uh, so for that reason, the Linux developers have uh, decided that we don't want to offer read-write on, on those block devices. It's possible, but the code is simply not there because we decided it was too dangerous. Um, so we, we give a block device for read-only file systems. And that's a quite nice feature because now um, you, can, you can write some uh, read-only file system. For instance, Squash, Squash file system is, is popular, heard about it, but it's a very compressed file system and it's, it's very popular to read-only uh, rootfs, okay? 
uh, there the command just shows x x4 because I thought it was popular enough to show it, but it it simply works, and you you solve all the all the the bad blocks and all the world leveling, but restrained to read only. Okay. For the references, there are a lot of references. I mean, the in, the, in, the internet is just full of uh, papers and and specs and all this, that stuff uh, from from the flash vendors. For instance, Micron has very good references to understand more, and they are quite readable. They are probably better than my talk, but that's okay. And then, well, the MTD Linux subsystem is very well documented. Uh, the MTD also comprises the, the UBI and, and the UBI file system. So if you go there, there is a bunch of documentation, like bunches and bunches of documentation about uh, MTD and about UBI and about all the features that that I have mentioned, and there are plenty of details there. So the SPI NOR subsystem that I haven't mentioned much, it's uh, uh, it's also documented, and there's a talk which is quite good, and the internet, of course. Um, there's a slide that is missing about uh, the MTD subsystem and the UBI subsystem that is very uh, is very healthy. There are changes uh, all the time. For instance, uh, I think last month, the SPI NAND framework was introduced. So uh, we have SPI NOR and we also have SPI NAND. So we need both. But since the chips were very new, uh, there, there wasn't any SPI NAND subsystem. So in order to introduce it, uh, the, the developers had to uh, refactor a lot of stuff. So now the subsystem, the entire MTD design is uh, is is different, and so the the subsystem is very healthy. The it's being changed all the time, and as you can see by the by the samples, I I think it's quite simple to test it. I think it's quite sim simple to do some change, rebuild the kernel, and then test it, break it maybe. So uh, feel free to hack it and whatever. Okay, now the questions, if we have time. Okay, then why the rush? Hey. Hi, Zeka. Uh, as you said, uh, UBI fast will, will take care about uh, wearing of the chip and all of this stuff. But I wonder wh where it's actually storing that. It's storing on th in the chip, right? So if you just said that you will change the file and you want to store that information, you still have to erase some, something and, and put that information, right? Wh which kind of uh, methods that it, does it use to make it better, actually? Well, um, yes, so good, good question. Um, so as I have mentioned, um, the UBI layer already handles the wear leveling. So actually, you don't have to worry about wear leveling. What does that mean? That means that you can change contents, and the sectors is, are going to be spread. You, 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 you won't kill one specific sector. OK, so far so good. However, uh, the, the UB file system uh, takes care of of the usage by being designed as as a journaling file system. So, because of the design, and I'm not a file system expert, so I don't know much about that. But uh, being being a journaling file system and having a lot of cache, a lot of cache means that the changes are going to be written to the flash um, sparingly. Okay. Uh, not not very often. Now, your question is, okay, what 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 if I need my change to actually hit the device, right? Well, in that case, you have to sync it like any other file system. It's like the same as any disk. I mean, if you th if you think about it, most most developers don't know about this uh, if they don't study, but. Um, the file systems and the Linux blog layer and, and the entire kernel has a bunch of hashes 
uh, for, for all your data. So you have to sync your files whenever you need your changes to hit the media. This is the same here. It does, it's, it's, it's not different from, from, from regular disk devices. Um, for embedded devices, what, what you usually ha would, would have to do is you have to decide very well, okay, when, when the user hits the save button, okay, in that moment, I want my data to be synced to, to flash. And in that case, okay, if it's one byte, heck it, you will have to erase the entire sector just to read that byte. But you have to architecture your, your product and you, you have to decide exactly the moments where you want to do this and the moments where you don't care, right? And that's what people do. I don't know if that, that was clear enough. Mais alguma pergunta? Uh, for example, if you have a file system like um, F2FS, what would be the difference between using F2FS on a flash uh, device like a NAND device and using a SquashFS? It would be uh, it would make sen make sense you to use uh, F2FS in a flash based device like this. I don't think it will make sense because SquashFS is a, is a read-only file system which is already thought to never write on it, so uh, it's, it's already optimized to do that. Uh, if you want to use X2, why would you do that? I mean, you, you, you would have to have some, some, some reason. It's perfectly possible, but being read-only, I don't know. I mean, if you, if you hack the kernel, which is very, very easy, I mean, it's super easy to just hack the kernel and put the write there, I mean, for, for the UBI block, okay? So UBI exposes a, uh, the, the block layer, the block interface, I'm sorry, the block interface. Uh, you could just add the write support there. But the problem with that, and that's the reason we, why we have removed it, is that the X2 file system is not uh, thinking about okay, let's let's not waste the flash too much. So it's going to be doing a crazy number of writes without uh, without any any restriction or without any. Recursion, uh, right? And it will probably waste your flash. I mean, I don't know how sooner or how later. Um, in my opinion, it's perfectly possible that you that you decide that you you are not going to write too often. Okay, so let's say this: I have um, a write partition, a write volume. Yes, I, I think you misheard me. I didn't say X2 file system. I said uh, F2 file oh, system. Oh, F2 F2 FS. Right. Oh, I don't know. That's a very good question, and, and I don't know. Oh. Someone would have to. Some of you, right? Because uh, yes. the developer says that yes. it's a file, a yes. flash-friendly file yes. system, right? So yes. I, well, I, I know there's a difference between the yes. Yes. Uh, type of flash, yes. because uh, uh, F2FS is more like for SSDs yes. and not for so read-only. F2FS is an, is another journaling file system that is developed by Samsung, I think. I don't know, and it's supposedly going to take care of your flash. That's the opposite that, 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 that I was saying. So F, F2FS um, could be a good choice, might be a good choice, and okay. But nobody has ever uh, measured the numbers, so nobody knows, but feel free to do it. It's just a number of matter of measuring the performance and see how it goes. Okay, if you have any more questions, you can come by my booth um, and just ask me. I mean, that's okay. Or you can send me an email. And thank you for listening and